Hello everyone, SimCFI here, and today we're going to have a short video on how everything works underneath the hood of these A2A planes. And we're going to start with the Comanche being a carbureted airplane. So let's get inside the maintenance hangar real quick. We're here at, at Benton Field in Redding, California. So we get into the maintenance, maintenance hangar with Shift 7, and you can see some of the details on this clipboard here. It's a PA28180. The engine is a Lycoming 0360. The O means with, without anything else, it's a carbureted engine. If it was a fuel injected engine, it would have an I in front of it, so IO360. And then a T in front of that would be turbo, and a, there's some other prefixes they use as well, but usually you see T, I, and O as the main ones for turbo, fuel injected, and then just O as their base letter. Okay, and then it has a type of propeller it's got, and then we have your externals that you can swap out, your your speed mod, your engine heater kit, different battery, different tires. But let's get under the hood here, under the engine cowling, we should say. And we have all these components here that some of you may not be familiar with. I've had a user request to explain what these things are. And so we're going to do that. Now we're going to start with how the engine operates at a basic level. All right, so here's a cutaway of the 0320 that, that we have in the Cherokee. We have our four cylinders, and two of them are cut away here. So inside the cylinder we have our piston with a connecting rod that connects it to the crankshaft. And then coming these yellow wires you see are the spark plugs. There's two per cylinder, so it's two on top and then two on bottom here. So one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight spark plugs for the four cylinders. And then I found a neat little animation that shows how the whole process works. So we have our piston here. This is the connecting rod going to the crankshaft. And we have an intake and exhaust valve. The intake valve is where the fuel and air mixture comes in on the intake stroke. Now this is the compression stroke where both valves are closed. The piston is moving up to compress the fuel and air mixture. And then we have the power stroke, which is when the spark plugs ignite and they burn, the, it explodes and burns the fuel-air mixture. This is what's actually forcing the piston down, and this is what makes the whole engine move. So all the other times where you see the piston moving up and down for intake, compression, and exhaust, that means some other piston is on its exhaust. I mean, it, other, some other piston is on its power stroke, and so they're all, they're all set at different phases. So this piston might be on an intake, this one might be on a compression, this one might be on an, a power stroke, and this one could be on an exhaust one. And so this one, when it's on its power stroke, it's moving, it's pushing down to move the crankshaft so all the other ones rotate. So one of them is firing at a time. So now, once it's done, uh, it burns, and the piston comes back up, the exhaust valve opens, and it goes out the exhaust and then it starts over again. Now what, what forces these uh, intake and exhaust valves to open, they're not showing the rocker arm for the intake, but there's rocker arms for both. You have a rocker arm, and these valves are usually held shut by springs, but then during a certain point on the crankshaft when this little, this little bump here pushes on this rod here, to push down on the rocker arm to open the valve. And you can actually see that in an animation here. These are the little bumps, and this is one of the valves op opening right here. So this one's open, and this one's closed. So you can see them moving here. And the piston going up and down. And then these are the springs and the rocker arms. All right, so now you have a basic understanding of how the engine works. Let's go back in here. Now we can kind of, a, you have an idea of what we're talking about when you see some of these things. So we have our four cylinders. We have the crankshaft. That crankshaft is an all important shaft going down the middle that connects all the cylinders and it, the, the, the propeller is directly connected to the crankshaft and the starter. So crankshaft is very important. We have our starter, that's what, that's what gets everything turning because you have to, 
that the cylinders have to be moving up, the pistons have to be moving up and down for that spark to be generated for the process to start. So the starter is a, is a motor that'll turn everything and then once the, once the fuel and air start co being combusted and you have those power strokes pushing the pistons down then the engine can take over on its own and the starter will disengage. Once that's happening the alternator is, a, is another belt that's attached to the to the crankshaft via another gear and or wheel and so that's spinning more coils that generate electricity via alternate current and that's what powers the, the electrical system in the aircraft to save the battery. The battery is really used for starting mainly then the alternator takes over for the rest of the electrical power and then the cylinders themselves you can kind of measure the efficiency of how much power they're developing by the compression how much how much pressure they can actually hold in the cylinder. So we click on compression and do a compression test. We can see the results graphically here and we can close this out and we see the results down here PSI over 80 over 80 pounds and so obviously the, the lower the number the less power they're going to be able to put out and they slowly wear down just from general use the pistons going up and down they have oil that'll help uh, keep all the moving metal parts separated and then uh, otherwise just running getting getting the temperatures too hot will start deforming the cylinder and the piston and then the parts start rubbing against each other and then there's more gaps where there shouldn't be and so this less power can be developed so that's why we do compression sacks these are normally done at annual inspection so once a year go back into here so then we have the rest of the components here the um, the vacuum pump is geared into the engine and depending on which way it spins it's going to develop positive or negative pressure so usually negative for a vacuum and that that vacuum is what supplies uh, the vacuum source to your to your attitude and heading indicator your gyro your your vacuum gyros and here's an image of what it looks like this is a vacuum pump and on the inside it's got carbon carbon graphite rotor with uh, carbon veins through here and this spins and that's what's generating the the vacuum and some newer aircraft like the Cessna 172 R model have two vacuum pumps for redundancy so on the enunciator panel if you see LVAC and RVAC those are the enunciators for each vacuum pump so if one of those lights turns on you'll still the instruments will still work but you're going to want to land as soon as you can to get it fixed because if the other one fails and you're in instrument flying conditions IMC then you're going to have a bit of a problem. You have your magnetos those are on the back of the engine you got two of them for redundancy because if one fails then the engine would fail so we got two sets of magnetos and then magnetos aren't electrical at all they're not connected to the electrical system they're just spinning magnets really that generate electrical spark and so they're geared into the engine so they're spinning when the engine is spinning and then we have your mechanical fuel pump so this is an engine driven fuel pump as the engine is spinning this pump is spinning to to generate fuel pressure into the engine you have an oil pump for the same purpose that the pressurize the oil system and deliver oil to the engine where it needs to be in oil lines that deliver the oil an oil filter so then it goes from the system into the engine and then when it comes back out of the engine it's going to be a little bit dirty from the combustion process and cleaning the engine essentially and so it goes through the oil filter before going back into the sump to be repumped back through the engine and so during your oil changes you change the oil because the oil gets dirty but then you also change the filter to make sure that I can keep filtering the oil efficiently and then the carburetor will explain in detail later but the carburetor is where the fuel and air mixture happens and then that and then it gets delivered to the engine you have an air filter so the air filter it there's coming in via tube somewhere an intake manifold and then it goes to the air filter the filter out dust or other contaminants before it goes to the carburetor because you don't want dirty contaminants getting into the fuel as well so that air filter is there for a purpose fuel filter kind of the same principle just make sure it uh you know there might be some gunk at the bottom of the fuel tanks and fuel filter ensures that the fuel gets filtered before it goes to the rest of the system and then you have your electric fuel pump which is uh, 
what we use for priming mainly in uh, fuel injected airplanes or or it's just a backup really on these uh, on these carbureted ones especially low wing where you don't have gravity fed from high wing and so we usually use the fuel pump on takeoff and landing and when we're changing fuel tanks just to make sure that if the engine fuel pump fails we have this one going to back it up and so we check it uh, before we start the engine to ensure that it generates pressure and so that's really there for a backup and that's that's all of these components then you just have your oil that we can change we've discussed this stuff before and different spark plugs all right so that's that's it for the the Cherokee let's go over that carburetor real quick we said we'd go over that so the carburetor it uh, the, it's usually a float type float type carburetor and this float operates kind of the same way as the float in your toilet does and so it, it's maintaining the fuel level in this float chamber just from this float and so if it gets below a certain level it'll let more fuel from the, from the tanks come in just to fill up this is where it feeds the rest of the system so then the fuel is going to go out this tube here and then this is where the air comes in and you see we have a venturi here kind of like two tops of wings just like how we generate lift with low pressure this is also generating generating a low pressure area and so when you have an area of lower pressure it's going to stuff is going to move from high pressure to low pressure so that it's lower pressure here versus the higher pressure which is normal pressure in here so then the air gets sucked out of these holes here it's similar to if you've seen an airbrush, a painting airbrush and so it gets sucked out of the holes, mixes w with the air and then it goes into the engine and the amount of fuel and air that's going to the engine is regulated by the throttle valve here and this is your throttle control in the airplane when you pull the throttle all the way back it's gonna close this like you know just about 98 percent of the way close so there's a little bit of a gap to allow for idling of the engine if it shut completely, it would cut it off completely and the engine would die. But so this is your throttle valve and then so this is if you push your throttle all the way forward what it looks like, allowing the maximum amount of fuel and air to go into the engine. And then we have a mixture control on most airplanes. And the mixture control is directly connected to this needle. And all this needle does is it just it would be a little bit closer to this inlet here, and it's just gonna control how much can how much fuel can get into this into this tube here to mix. So if you pull your mixture lever all the way back, all the way out, this needle is going to completely seal off this hole, blocking all the fuel to the carb to the rest of the carburetor and to the engine. And if you have your mixture lever all the way forward, it's going to allow the maximum amount of fuel to go through this hole and then everything in between. It's a pretty simple system for the mixture there. Okay, we've discussed that. And then one more thing to discuss about carburetors is because of this low pressure it's also decreasing the temperature a lot and so when you have what well, if you have any well if you're flying through visible moisture you can get icing on the outside of your airframe as well and then as it comes into here there'll be some moisture some rain or whatnot or fog or um, in the case of these carburetors a certain amount of humidity in the air just enough moisture and that'll start freezing on the inside of the carburetor and if it freezes enough it can just block it off completely which is just like what you're doing when you close the throttle and you'll slowly see a power reduction as it ices up before it might just cut out completely so then we have carburetor heat as well so right below this carburetor as the air comes in um, there's there's a little your, your carburetor heat lever or control kind of like a throttle valve it'll it'll duct the air instead from the normal air inlet which is filtered to heat coming up from the exhaust area just heat generated from that to go up into here and melt the ice and so that is unfiltered and so that's why you don't want to use carburetor heat on the ground because then you could get dust and other contaminants coming up into your fuel air mixture all right so that's carburetor we're going to switch out this airplane for the 172 and, and discuss fuel injection a little bit. Alright, so now we've swapped it out for the Cessna 172. Go into the maintenance hangar, shift 7. This one has an IO360. It's also a little bit, it's a little different engine instead of the O320. This one's still 160 horsepower. 
With a different prop, you can make it 180 horsepower. Um, but otherwise, everything else is about the same. We've got some uh, wheel fairings here, flap seals. Go into the engine. And all the components are the same. The main difference is instead of a carburetor, there's fuel injection. Otherwise, we've got the starter, alternator, air filter, oil pump. You know, everything else is still here. All right, so let's talk about the fuel injection real quick. So fuel injection, we got our fuel tank. Fuel comes down past this. Uh, well, normally it'll go through the engine-driven fuel pump. Otherwise, it'll it'll go through the auxiliary fuel pump, which is it, which is the electrical one that you can switch on in the cockpit for priming. And also in case this one fails, the engine-driven one fails. Then it comes down the line here to the fuel air control unit. This is where most of the action happens. So in here is where we have our throttle and our mixture connect connected into. And the throttle is controlling a throttle valve, just like on the carburetor. It's going to govern how much air can go into the engine. And then the mixture usually has like a little a V-shaped card that slides over the fuel line, kind of like that mixture needle in the carburetor, to govern how much fuel will go in. Otherwise, the amount of fuel that goes in is governed by how much air is going in. And on like homings, it measures air pressure. And on the Continentals, it's a little bit simpler than that. I forget exactly what it is. But either way, it it uses how much air is going in to govern how much fuel to put in. So then you have your fuel-air mixture coming up through here. And then it goes through the, the fuel th goes through the fuel manifold valve which then leads out to each cylinder and it feeds it right into the the fuel air mixture goes right into the intake valve right before going into the cylinder itself everything else from there is the same in how the engine works so that's the main difference between fuel injection and carbureted you don't have uh, carburetor heat obviously on a fuel injected airplane so carburetor icing is not an issue but then induction icing can be an issue on fuel injected in which case you have an alternate air valve where it's just going to draw air from a different source. Alright, so that's that's about it for the, the engine systems underneath the, the cowling here. That should explain a lot of things for you guys. Let me know if you, if you have any other questions in the comments below or any corrections to what I've said. See you in the next video.